Hello everybody, it's Julia here from the Highly Sensitive Tarot and I'm just here today with a fairly short video just to show you the Circe Tarot in a bit more detail, a walkthrough. Um, I showed it a few days ago in a video and a couple of people asked to see it in more detail so that's what I'm going to do. So Circe is a sorceress um, from Greek mythology, from Homer's Odyssey. I'd sort of been vaguely aware of who she was because I really like um, Pre-Raphaelite art and Waterhouse, who's done, I think, two or three paintings of Circe, actually. There's one quite famous one of her um, standing with a bowl of water. She's sort of in a pool. There's another one of her offering a cup to Ulysses. Um, yeah, so I know a little bit about Circe. Um, so this, I told you, didn't I? This deck is by Fabio Vicentin and Perlugi Sera. <laughs> I've pronounced that terribly, I'm sorry. Low Scarabio. And it was released in the UK um, just in the last last couple of weeks I, I don't know whether it's Amazon have any copies of it yet but I managed to get this copy from the Oneness Emporium in the UK it's a very very beautiful deck I'm very very pleased with it and um, they're beautiful cards I'm really looking forward to starting to work with this actually so I, I wasn't that aware of who Circe was, really. Like I said, I'd, I'd come across her, I think, through the Waterhouse paintings. Um, but Rebecca at A Simple Altar knows an awful lot about Greek mythology. And she reminded me that she, um, when I think when Odysseus visited her island, she... I think what did she do she changed I think with poison and magic and incantations and drugs perhaps I don't know I think she changed um some of Odysseus's men into swine I think she was able to change people into all kinds of animals I think I remember reading wolves and lions and swine um but Odysseus she wanted to make him fall in love with her so <clears throat> I think that's about as much as I know. Um, I'm trying to remember because I did read recently about her. I think she was the daughter of Helios, the sun god, and of the ocean nymph Percy, or Perse, Perse, perhaps. That's how you pronounce it. I think I've got that right. So the little guidebook that we've got here, it says... What does it say? Let's just read the bits about Circe. Circe is the pu purest example of the union between myth and magic, the perfect fusion of memory with the work. She's the first sorceress to appear in the Homeric tales, and she is the forerunner of the alchemist, a divinity born of light and the liquid element. Helios and Perse. So that yeah, I think that's the Helios and Perse, isn't it? The solar god who conjoins with water and they generate the synthesis of the great work, the enchanted beauty and sublime singing of Circe, a goddess whose skilled hands weave the royal garments of the gods. She's an expert in the magical arts, a connoisseur of the powerful, the power of herbs and plants a divine architect of human fortunes and she <clears throat> excuse me she the goddess is relegated to the island of ea to a world of her own in which nature and magic are perfectly in balance she surrounds herself with ferocious beasts that are brought back to an essential and primordial condition rendered tame by her work the human being, stripped of appearances, finds himself naked and forced by the magic work to show his true essence. Circe is thus the alchemical crucible in which the purification and transmutation of humankind takes place. 
The role she assigned in both the Homeric cycle and the subsequent compositions is not a coincidence. A goddess with a beautiful sunny appearance, with a melodious voice and a skilled enchantress, she shows all her ability to dominate both nature and man. Confined to the island, in a strip of land far from Olympus, Circe takes on the magical characteristics of the alchemical crucible, a living anthenor. She can turn man into a man be mad beast, brought back to primeval, primeval condition, and then through her powers she leads him to his true essence, to physical and spiritual beauty and harmony. She has a vulnerable side that makes her similar to a human being, Ulysses' 22 companions, having fallen into a trap woven by Circe, are brought back to their bestial condition after being administered a magical drink, a herbal extract, the composition of which is known only to the sorceress. 22 of them, a magic number that brings us back to the tarot. My birthday is the 22nd. That's strange, isn't it? So 22 of them, a magic number that brings us back to the tarot, drink the potion, become intoxicated and make a journey into the raw reality of their own essence. The choice of herbal mixture is no coincidence. It's a ritual drink consumed in diaso... Dia I can't never pronounce this word. Dionian. <laughs> Dionysian. Oh, celebrations in order of in honour of Demeter and Persephone, subterranean deities who lead man downwards and into darkness on an initiatory journey that is required to strip away all the trappings. God, there's a lot here, isn't there? I'm obviously not going to read all of this. So basically what we've got here is the story of Circe, um, the myths, the mythology of Odysseus, and Homer's Odyssey and all of that stuff, really. Um, yeah, I'm not going to read all of it. But it's a really it's a really interesting story, isn't it? I really like it. Um, you can really get sort of pulled into Greek mythology, I think. So all I'm going to do today is, I think, give you a little walk through. Let's just see if. So actually, you do get told who each of the characters are, such as the fool here. This is Dionysus, the god born of Zeus. The magician is Hermes. The high priestess is Cassandra. The empress is Lady of the Earth, Demeter. The emperor is Oce Oceanus, the last of the great titans. The Hierophant is Chiron, or Chiron, I don't know how you pronounce that. The Lovers is Cupid and Psyche. So actually, it's really interesting, isn't it? The Three Fates, the, work, the Wheel of Fortune, Justice is Zeus, Prometheus, the Hanged Man. Yeah, Icarus, the Tower, of course, the Minotaur, the Devil. Selene, the moon goddess, yep. The star looks like Artemis. Yeah, 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 the world. So are the miners. So the miners are, seem to be represented in a lot of cases by um, Greek heroes and gods and goddesses and titans and heroines so yeah it really does tell a tale you get quite a lot of information actually for a low scarabio deck what i'll do when i've gone through through quickly to show you all the cards is i'll just pull one of them and i'll read from the book so let's just put this camera down do you like my pumpkin by the way <laughs> boo <laughs> i thought that was so funny so here we go. This is just a quick walk through, really. I'll show you all the cards. And then, like I said, I'll pull one of them. 
So we can see, can't we, who these people are? Hades. Wow. The Three Fates, that was, wasn't it? Zeus. Can't remember who that was. Aren't they beautiful, though? These cards are just gorgeous. The colours of them, I just love the depth of colours. They're very jewel tones. And look at that, Celine. I think in one of my goddess decks I have her. Helios. They're just beautiful, aren't they? The richness of the colours. They're very emotive. I think these will be very easy to read. They're, you know, they follow a, a Rider Waite Smith kind of format. <laughs> they are just beautiful, aren't they? What a time to have been alive. Wow. <laughs> really like them. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. What's not to like? Big burly men with beards, which I always like, I must admit, and beautiful women. Gorgeous colours. Magic. Just beautiful. Well, he's not a very nice King of Pentacles there, is he? Well, the King of Pentacles is a very generous man. He looks mean. <laughs> wow, the Three of Wands. So lovely. Blimey, look at this one, the Five of Wands. This man here is bound. That looks really unpleasant, doesn't it? Hmm. Just gorgeous. I can't wait to start using this deck, to be honest. It's lovely. It's just, you could just so use this for storytelling, couldn't you? It just takes you to another place. Wow, look at that. Look, the Two of Swords. To be honest, out of all the difficult cards in the deck, this has always been one of my favourites. It has um, a lot of significant meaning for me. That's amazing. Now that is quite awful, isn't it? That is really quite awful. The Five of Swords. <laughs> There's some difficult cards for sure in the swords here, isn't there? Yeah. Wow, look at that. I just love the colours, the richness of them. That's a good card for the Page of Swords, isn't it? The beautiful queen and the very sombre king. So there we go. That's the cards. I hope that wasn't too quick. So let's just pick one. Let's just pick one. I'm going to go for, no, I'm not going to go for a court card. Or an ace. <laughs> what am I going to go for? What? Let me find the card, a card that I was 
very interested in. Uh, what, what we have? Um, I'm going to read you the Three of Swords, actually, I think, from this, because that was a very difficult card, wasn't it? So this one. Always interested to see what the Three of Swords is about. Because to me, it's not necessarily heartache is it it's a it's a mental torment it's a mental pain isn't it so this is dido i think that says there dido founder and first queen of carthage she is on her knees devastated and embittered by the abandonment of anus oh god <laughs> a e n E A S Aeneas, her beloved and adored companion, she resolutely wields the sword given her to her by the warrior taken away by fate. Betrayed in her affections and a broken heart, she will make the ultimate gesture. And the key word is sadness. Hmm. Let's find a nice card as well. A card that's not a sad card. <laughs> Uh, what should we go for? Um, 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 no, not that one. Let's go for the Eight of Pentacles. That's an, an interesting card. I like that. Where's the Pentacles? So in the dark, in his dark cave, the divine. Oh dear, I should have picked a card that I could actually read the name of the hero. Hephaestus, Hephaestus, son of Hera, creates and tempers the mighty weapons of the gods. Forced into hidden caverns, the valiant craftsman forges each, each instrument with skill and mastery, giving the great ruler of Olympus the powerful thunderbolts that will vanquish every enemy. Accuracy and ingenuity are his skills which he employs to the benefit of Zeus's children. And the key word here is commitment. So I like that. The pentacles. Yeah, so there we go. I hope you enjoyed um, this little walkthrough of this gorgeous deck. It's a very weird feel there, isn't it? I don't like his mask, actually, if I'm honest. That's, who did I say the fool was? Dionysus, the god born of Zeus and the queen of the world of the dead, the divine Persephone, he is the father of drunkenness. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't like his mask, if I'm honest. But anyway, there we go. The very, very gorgeous and beautiful Circe Tarot. Um, which I'm sure you will see some more of on my channel at some point. So I hope you enjoyed having a look. Do say hello and um, I'll see you again soon. Thank you.